Hi, I'm Tom Long with Beach Meditations. This Sunday is the Sunday in which we celebrate the Lord's Baptism. Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain I don't like preachers making political endorsements or condemnations of political figures. I feel that it unnecessarily brings division into the church and that God's, God's kingdom is not of this world. But the uncomfortable truth of Scripture is that God's people are commissioned to speak truth to power and to speak truth to one another in love. For me, rather than judging politicians, it is important that we think critically and evaluatively about their words and actions. My German granddad taught my mother a lesson which she in turn passed on to me. Little Johnny had found a way to get up on the roof, but then he was stuck and couldn't find a way down. Papa called out to Johnny. Johnny, jump! Papa will catch you. <laughs> no, Papa, no, Johnny says. And this goes back and forth. Uh, Papa keeps, keeps ca cajoling him. Jump, Johnny, jump! Papa will catch you. Johnny's, no, Papa, no, Papa. On and on and on. And finally, Johnny's ready to jump. And so he jumps off to jump into his father's arms. And just as he gets to Papa's arms, Papa pulls his arms back and lets Johnny fall to the ground. Papa wags his finger at Johnny and says, let that be a lesson to you. Don't trust nobody, not even your Papa. We were taught not to take anyone at their word, not even parents. Discover the facts and use logic. Test whether what people are saying is true. This is what I mean by critical thinking. It is literally a life-saving skill. This Sunday, many churches will be studying Mark's story of the baptism of Jesus. This happens right off in the first chapter of Mark's concise gospel. Mark begins in verse 1, like John begins his very different gospel. Mark wrote the beginning of the good news. Not quite as directed reference to Genesis 1 as John's verbatim reference, but Mark wants us to read this chapter in the context of the chapter of Genesis in which each refrain of the creation poem begins with the words, and God said. And this is repeated in verses 3, 6, 9, 11, 14, 20, 24, and 26, usually followed by, let there be. And God said, let there be. Genesis 1 is a poetic ode to the power of God's voice to bring about creation. John 1 told us that Jesus was the word that creates a new person in us. In Mark 1, once Jesus is baptized, God tears open the heavens and gives voice to the reality that Jesus is, in fact, God's beloved Son. A pronouncement that symbolically opens a portal between God and ourselves. Our fallen nature separated us from God's holy nature. God's loving and gracious nature sent God the Son, filled with God the Spirit, to satisfy God's requirements for justice by dying in our place on the cross. Later in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verse 37, we are told that Jesus breathed his last on the cross. Then immediately in verse 38, Mark adds that the curtain that veiled the rest of us from the Holy of Holies, the place of God's manifest presence in the temple, that curtain was torn open from top to bottom. It is with his voice that God speaks the world into being. It is with his word that God makes believers a new creation. It is with his voice that the separation between God and ourselves is torn asunder and God is set loose among us. If there is a religion that places a greater emphasis on the formative power of words, I haven't read of it. We are created in God's image but fallen. We are recreated in Christ to start down the road to the restoration of our role, our proper role 
is to shine God's glorious and gracious nature into our world. And we are reminded in Scripture that the formative nature of our words plays a role in that mission. As God's image bearers, whether we profess Christian faith or not, our words have power. Mrs. Berlin, my junior high music teacher, encouraged my music. Her words contributed to my lifelong love of making music, one of my life's greatest blessings. The most powerful words we ever hear are, I love you. Words can build us up or tear us down. When people call other people names, a critical thinker, recognizes that the one doing the name-calling is a destructive force. Words can be instruments of truth that can help us build on our strengths or recognize our weaknesses. The Apostle Paul exhorts us to, quote, speak the truth in love, unquote, in Ephesians 4, verse 15. And then, again, quoting him, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, unquote, Ephesians 4.25. Think about what that means for a minute. Before you go to post something on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, you know, Snapchat or whatever it is, uh, social media that you're going on, whether you, before you put something in an email, just because you heard it on a news broadcast or read it from somebody that you like on the internet, before you post that, ask yourself, am I speaking the truth, one, and am I speaking the truth in love? Throughout the Old Testament, God directs prophets to speak the truth to those in power. The loyalty of God's people is never ultimately to be in a human leader. Our loyalty is to be to God and to the truth. The church has too often failed to live up to this. We have bought into the political spirit of our times throughout history. We've even split denominations in the United States to continue to support the evil of slavery. There are pictures from early in the last century of KKK white supremacists holding ceremonies in churches. Our ideals of courageous and loving truth-telling have never been fully realized. But that doesn't change the fact that the Bible calls us to be truth-tellers. Just as words of truth can help to form a better world, words of deceit can tear people and their nations down. The United States may have been unique in this current pandemic in that our elected leaders opted to downplay or deceive us about the real threat of COVID-19. People believed these lies and failed to take the precautions that were within their power that could have saved an unknown and untold number of lives. Also in my country, leaders lied about the electoral process, claiming that it was rigged and that the election was being stolen. Enablers argued these were only words and that we should let the lies continue. But in the end, violent followers, non-critical thinkers, violent followers of those lies were incited to invade our Capitol building, building, killing one of our police force and resulting in the injury of many others. One of the deceived insurrectionists ended up shot dead. None of this would have happened without words of deceit. God is the source of truth. Jesus equates himself with the truth in John 14, verse 6, when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in John 8, 32, Jesus says, the truth will set us free. In contrast to that, in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus says, quote, you are from your father, the devil, and you choose to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies, unquote. And then 
uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 through 15, Paul adds, And no wonder, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is not strange if his ministers also disguise themselves as ministers of righteousness. Their end will match their deeds, unquote. When we speak the truth, we help make our world better. But if we do not approach what we read, hear, see, and share on social media with critical thinking, we can be unwittingly deceived and become ministers of Satan instead of God, ministers of destruction and not creation. How diligent we are about fact-checking and truth-telling will make a great difference in the balance of whether our lives are creating something positive in the world. Freedom, light, justice, and love are created from knowing and speaking the truth. In John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32, John says, Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth and The truth will make you free. Live by the truth. Know the truth. Find freedom in the truth. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts with you. May God bless you richly in the days ahead. And may God bless the United States of America. Pour down